Hello and welcome to another Storage Point video. My name is Chris Geyer, Product Manager for Storage Point at Metalogix. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about Storage Point 3.0. This is just going to be a basic introduction to the, the, the new version. We'll talk about where it fits, etc. Stay tuned for some other videos that dig into different features and different how-to sessions. First you need to understand that we are not merely a blob offloading or externalization product. Rather, we see ourselves as a more holistic SharePoint storage management product. However, a key piece of this is that we are built on and rely upon the ability to externalize or remote your blobs from the SharePoint content database via EBS or RBS interfaces. We consider the new 3.0 version to be a major release. It's a result of our own SharePoint and ECM experiences as well as feedback from customers, partners, and of course countless analyst briefings. In 3.0 we wanted to deliver you a ruggedized SharePoint storage management solution that didn't merely offload blobs or passively archive content. We wanted to proactively and intelligently manage how and where content is stored from its entry into SharePoint until it's purged or destroyed. Further, we didn't want to have any of the constraints associated with RBS file stream or to break SharePoint like some of the existing legacy archiving platforms do. With that out of the way, let's take a look at version 3. As I said before, Storage Point is more than just a simple blob offloading solution. With version 3, you can set up even broader tiered storage and hierarchical management systems. Within these tiers, you can choose from many different platforms, both on-premise and cloud-based solutions. You can now use Storage Point in SharePoint 2007, as well as SharePoint 2010. You can also choose between EBS or RBS, or run both at the same time. We would not be able to have a conversation about all this great storage management stuff unless we first addressed a core issue. Why blob remoting in the first place? One of the most obvious benefits is the overall reduction in SharePoint content database size. With Storage Point, this can be as much as 95%. Making this happen also helps in your overall SharePoint architectures. You can now organize all sites, site collections, etc. based on real business needs and not some physical boundaries like content database sizing recommendations. Once a blob is out of the database, what can be done with it is infinite. You can set up different tiers of storage, leveraging different replication technologies to address DR needs, or even write them out to more compliant storage. In short, once they are out of the database, Storage Point can help you economically, securely, and compliantly manage them. As you can see here, we integrate at a very low level within SharePoint. Some very specific items to point out on the Storage Point architecture are our shared services. Within here, you have common functionality such as compression, encryption, and logging. These are all important aspects of any storage management solution as they allow you to operate more efficiently with compression, more securely with encryption. They help tremendously in cloud-based situations, but more on that in another video. One area that has the most improvements is in how Storage Point uses and takes advantage of endpoints. Being able to easily filter content based on a variety of properties and then writing those to specified endpoints. You can choose how they are used within your profiles and can also monitor them and migrate between them quickly and easily. You'll be able to better visualize this by the end of the video. Let's take a look at how the flow of this might look. As I upload a file and specify some metadata, SharePoint will write the metadata to the content database and hand the blob off to Storage Point. We determine if there's a profile associated that is applicable. If not, we can still write the blob to the database. If there is a profile, we determine what endpoint is to be used based on the criteria you set up in that profile. The file is then either written asynchronously or synchronously to an endpoint. At this point, we need to explain the idea behind synchronous versus asynchronous operations. This idea of an asynchronous write is a very important one to understand, especially how it affects what Storage Point can do. 
Once configured, an asynchronous endpoint will write out to an area defined as system cache endpoints. Then later, this will be written to your asynchronous endpoint via a content migrator job. These types of endpoints are particularly useful for cloud-based endpoints, as they eliminate the latency end users will experience when saving content blobs to the cloud, or even less performant tiers of storage, whether those be local or in another data center across your WAN. These asynchronous writes will also allow a great deal more context to your content. As you will see moving forward, with async writes and storage points ability to gain more context, you can do things such as promote folders and file names. Let's take a look at this. Previously, when a file was written out to its storage location, it was stored with folder names based on date, and the file name ended up being a GUID. However, now you can promote the full site and library path along with the actual file name. This can be a benefit in many areas, including your backup and recovery strategies, allowing you to better manage what you are backing up and or restoring. Another big improvement is the ability to do some pretty advanced filtering on what content you put where. Now you can do simple scopes, like everything in a site collection goes to storage A, etc., but you can also take the next step and scope based on file type, site, content type, or even narrow it all the way down to a specific list. Let's take a look at what this means for blob archiving in tiered storage. This slide can illustrate the point of how blob externalization plays a key role in storage management. The management helps you move content between different tiers of storage based on some criteria you specify. This criteria can be such things as content type, metadata values, or even age. Moving different pieces of content based on those criteria from active storage to near active and moving it on down the line, in each case, making things cheaper and cheaper to store. The right idea is having the right storage for the right type of content. Another way to look at it is to have your most important content on expensive storage, but it allows you to move that content down the spectrum, ensuring that the only place you are really needing to invest in storage is in the lower levels of storage, thus saving you saving you money. As content becomes less and less relevant, thus not needing the higher ends of storage, you can move it down based on criteria. Think of this in, in terms of uh, this type of storage you see in the slide as expensive being that high-end safe where your most important valuables are, but on the far other end you have cheap cardboard boxes that things aren't as important you keep in there but you still use it to keep things around just in case. I wouldn't want to leave you thinking that's all we did in, in version 3. We also added a significant amount of information into such things as reporting and health dashboards, providing you with more information on what content is going where and how much space is it taking, etc. We've also added PowerShell support, allowing you to do a wide variety of administrative functions through the PowerShell interface. We've added additional timer job controls to make those more configurable, made the UI much cleaner and much easier to use. Another important piece that you may have heard me mention is the idea of a blob migrate job. This is providing you the ability to move blobs between endpoints seamlessly without having to recall and externalize it. Well, that'll do it for this video. Be on the lookout for more videos coming your way soon as we dig more into version 3. If you should have questions or comments, please let us know.